And I say that, I have a hard time saying that. She's not unusual because she's one of the many, 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 many people who die daily here in America due to gun violence. She was 15 when she was gunned down in Chicago. And the difference, maybe, about her death is that her friends organized this day and organized the wearing of orange to honor her and to force people not to forget about gun violence, gun violence. Now, a resolution just says stay aware. It's not enough. It's necessary, but it is not enough because we have normalized gun violence. I am sorry, no other democracy in the world, no other wealthy nation in the world has normalized gun violence. Every day here in America, 200 people are shot from gun violence. Our own definition of a mass shooting is four or more victims. How many mass shootings have there been already in 2022? How many? Too many. 230 just in 2022. There is nothing normal about that. Buffalo neighbors shopping at their neighborhood grocery store, gunned down. Orange County, worshipers at service, murdered. Tulsa, Oklahoma yesterday, hospital workers and patients murdered. And of course, Texas. Uvalde. Where are the unspeakable? Where our children, our innocent children, are murdered by a weapon of war with their teachers? And where a 10-year-old girl smears the blood of her friend on herself in hopes that the shooter thinks she is dead. This cannot be normalized, but it has been. And we are subject to the tyranny of a minority of Americans and the tyranny of an industry driven by profit and no regard for human life, none. And yet they have allowed weapons of war to be a normalcy on our streets and any one of us to be at risk of dying at any moment, no matter what we do on any day. And that is not acceptable. And we have got to stop it. And resolutions are only one part. And while we know that effective gun laws work, we know that California is safer. We know that Massachusetts is safer. We know that Hawaii is safer. We know that New York is safer. And they are all safer because they have done simple things that the vast majority of Americans support. Simple things like ban assault weapons, weapons of war, like pass red flag orders of which we were the first state, and background checks and waiting time. Those are simple. We need more than that, but at least those could begin to end this madness. And prayers, I am sorry, I cannot pray about this. No God of any of our faiths would condone this madness. No God. And so we have got to stop it. And I'm so proud of everyone gathered here today. And amongst those gathered here today are victims of gun violence and perpetrators of gun violence who all know that the madness has to stop. And I honor them and I love them and I'm so glad that they're joining us in this fight and leading it. And we've got to do it. And let me introduce now Julia Thibodeau from Mom's Demand Action, who will tell his personal story 
He is a volunteer with Moms Demand Action. He is a peacekeeper here in Sacramento, and he is director of Movement for Life, Julius. I can remember the very first time that I was here, and it's always difficult uh, coming up behind someone who speaks about the carelessness and, and, and the somehow the importance of guns being more important than our children. Uh, I'm basically here to speak to the young men that I hope are listening, to the young men that are often deemed unworthy there's a lot of young men out there who are misguided. And I just want to say, can we all agree that we believe mental health is a problem here in America? Yeah. Yeah. So if we agree that mental health is a problem here in America, how can we agree that 18 is old enough to buy a gun? Many of us don't even understand that many people don't even have the mental capacity to own a gun. We're talking about people who get upset in a school system where we provide no CBT, we provide no life skills, we provide no vocation. We're setting them, we're setting them up for failure. And then we wonder why we have all these school shootings when a student is being bullied and all we can do is punish. All we can do is punish. Our children grow up in a society much more worse than what we grew up in. My brother can get killed and I have to go to school, I have to go to school and listen to a group of individuals playing a song glorifying his death. And you expect me not to fight? And then when I do fight, there's no anger management. There's no emotional intelligence. And then we have a warped definition of what it means to be a man. You look behind me and you see all the names of these young women and even little girls who have been murdered. You a man and we can't protect our women and our babies? Let's quit playing. For a man, a man is, is, is designed to protect his women and his children. That's our purpose. If you don't have a purpose in life, you better understand that's one of your purposes in life, is to protect women and children. Our communities aren't safe. Like, how can you take pride in being a man and the community that you live in isn't safe? Azalea Anderson, gone. Michaelia Brent, gone. Zariah Page, gone. And this all started with Hadia Pendleton, gone. Beautiful little girls had their lives snuffed out. And even if it was an accident, it goes back to my original statement. We're not even equipped. We're giving people who aren't equipped, who don't have the mental capacity to own a weapon, we're giving them the license to kill. And we aren't doing anything about it. I was sharing with, uh, with Laura before I came up here how if you get up here and you say, well, America doesn't care about their children, we'll get all sorts of pushback, verbal pushback. What are we doing in action to, to back up that we actually care about our children? When we won't invest simple things like emotional intelligence, anger management, CBT, in our public school system. We have too many children that don't believe anyone cares about them. I was talking to my colleague Suzanne and she was telling me how she was just fighting off a mental breakdown, just fighting off depression. And our conversation got interrupted before I could tell her that at, at some point in time, I felt like I was fighting off going into a state of depression feeling helpless. We're adults. So imagine what that feels like for a young child to feel helpless, to be, to be battling depression. They lash out. They join gangs. They, they attach themselves to, to who will accept them, and oftentimes it's an evil group that will accept them. 
and embrace them and then use them to do their bidding, to do their evil bidding. And so we see 16 year olds, 17 year olds and 18 year olds shooting up their classmates or driving to an elementary and shooting up little kids, little small children. This individual, this individual in Texas was held for, for a 36 day evaluation. 30, no, 36 hour evaluation. What can you learn about me in 36 hours? Do we drop the ball right there? Can we start admitting our failures? Because that's the only way we're going to progress. If we look at how we've failed miserably, we're failing. We're failing our children, we're failing our women, and we're failing each other. Yeah, let's start there. Let's start with our failures. But you know, when you get into politics, and you're getting the egos and bravado and machismo, which all this is surrounded by. No, let's talk about my successes. Yeah, that's all we want to talk about is our successes. You can't grow being braggadocious. You can't grow uh, just focusing on your money and viewing young women and children as casualties. Yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna change this law. I'm not gonna raise the age of how old you have to be to buy a gun because I'm gonna lose political power. And we're, we're vote, we have a responsibility because we're voting these individuals into office. So don't act like your hands are tied and there's nothing we can do. We have to step up, we have to be brave, we're the new revolutionaries. Absolutely. And it's, it's a shame that, that so many of us are willing to die over trivial matters. But we won't put ourselves on the front line for real causes, like the future of our children. Yeah, the future of our children, I see a lot of grandparents out here too. We have to be concerned about what type of world our children and our grandchildren are going to be living in. Because it's getting progressively worse right before our eyes. I'll close with this. If there's anything that one can do that's admirable, that's to make certain sacrifices, to come out of our comfort zones, because it's going to take for us to be uncomfortable. It's going to take for us to face the fear of right now, you know, I, I'm not worried about the NRA uh, 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 saying that I'm attacking their money. And I know that's a powerful organization, but God is way more powerful than the NRA. And to my youngsters out there, the kingdom of God is way more important than any one of y'all neighborhoods. You want to rep something? Rep the kingdom of God. Rep being a family man. Rep being a man that, that you can be proud of, that your mama can be proud of. That your mama doesn't have to bow her head when they mention your name because it's on the news connected to a shooting. And I know you don't feel like we care about you. But we do. Let us give us the opportunity to show you that we care. Let's connect and let's make some changes. God bless. Thank you very much, Julius, for those powerful words in your action. Let's give another round of applause for Julius for all the work that he's doing and a huge round of applause for all the Moms Demand activists who are here with us today. Thank you, everybody, for being here. My name is Jesse Gabriel. I represent the West San Fernando Valley. Uh, I'm going to be very brief because we have an incredible group of leaders behind us who have assembled here, uh, legislators from every corner of this state who share a common purpose, to pass more common sense gun safety legislation to protect our communities. And you have heard uh, from last week that our governor is working with our legislature. We are going to expedite 
a number of bills and have several new laws in this state by the end of this month. So let's give a big round of applause for all of these legislators. We're going to hear from them, and I'm going to defer to some of our colleagues from the Women's Caucus who are, have a meeting with the governor, so we're going to try to give them an opportunity to speak quickly so that they can go. Uh, but, I, but I do want to share, we just came from inside the, the State Assembly Chambers. We, we had a debate of, of about an hour on a resolution recognizing uh, the, the, the work that we're trying to do on gun violence. And we heard comments from so many people from every corner of the state, and so much of it was from the perspective of a parent and a grandparent people who are worried about the safety of their kids. And one of the things that we acknowledged and we talked about is gun violence is a uniquely American phenomenon. We have mental health in all countries all over the world. There are mental health challenges. There, are, there is poverty in, in countries all over the world. If it was just about video games, if it was just about bullying, we would see gun violence in other countries in the same way that we see in the United States of America. But we don't. What we have here is a problem with weapons of war and e easy access to weapons of war. And that is why this group is committed and united to working to make sure we have more common sense gun safety legislation that will protect our communities. And as you're going to hear from some of my colleagues today, we are also calling on our colleagues in Washington to do more. We are safer here in, in the state of California because of the work that we have done. We have a lower gun violence death rate in this state because of the work that we've done, but we need action from Washington, D.C. Thoughts and prayers are not enough. So I just want to thank and applaud my colleagues here. You're going to hear from a lot of them. A lot of these folks have written laws that have saved lives in the state of California. They are writing laws that, have, that are going to save more lives in the state of California. This is an incredible group, and it's now my honor, honor to introduce Senator Susan Rubio. Good morning, everyone. I'm State Senator Susan Rubio, and I'm proud to stand here with my colleagues on National Gun Violence Awareness Day. But I'm so devastated that we have to be here to recognize that day. And I want to talk to you first as a teacher, because we cannot move forward without taking a moment to reflect on what happened in Texas. You know, as a 17-year classroom teacher, we practice every single day. How do we stay safe? The drill, lock the door, go down, stay quiet every single year. But I can tell you one thing, and that is that everything we practice is no match for weapons of war. And I want to reflect on a little girl who had to lay down and put blood on herself and play dead. I challenge all of us to think about that moment, how many of us could move on forward in our lives knowing that that moment happened. One little boy reflected on the fact that his teacher looked the shooter in the face and he said, it's time to die. I think of all my teacher friends, my fellow teachers currently serving in classrooms right now, and the fear that they must feel. And it is time for the federal government to take action. We're here year after year, shooting after shooting, and nothing gets done. We all know this is not the first time it happened in a school. It keeps happening, and we keep talking about it. And I want to make sure that we think of those children that we lost, 19 students and two teachers. The devastation for their families goes beyond what happened in that moment. We know a teacher lost her husband to a heart attack. That's how much the pain was that this man could not live a little longer. He died from the pain of losing his wife and left four children without parents. Again, I asked the federal government to act today as a victim's advocate I want to just share that every month, over 70 victims of domestic violence are shot by an intimate partner. And we need to stop that now. It's not about taking guns away from anyone. We want to respect our Constitution, no right to, to have guns. But it's about gun safety. It's about taking these guns that are killing our children one per second. That's not what we need in this country. 
So I just want to urge us to continue to call our federal government to act today, stop saying prayers, because that's not keeping our children alive. So again, on behalf of victims and a survivor myself, I ask the federal government to act today. Buenos dias. Thank you. Buenos dias. Soy la senadora Susan Rubio del Condado de Los Ángeles. Aquí estamos unidos para pedirle al gobierno federal que por favor actúen. Tenemos que quitar las armas de guerra fuera de nuestras comunidades. Están matando a nuestros hijos, nuestros padres, nuestros vecinos. Cada año estamos aquí. Han pasado muchas tragedias en escuelas. Como maestra de 17 años, les puedo decir con seguridad que el miedo está allí. Cada año practicamos cómo nos salvamos si entra una persona con una arma en una escuela. Podemos practicar todo lo que quieramos, pero si tenemos armas de guerra que están matando a nuestros hijos cada minuto, no podemos practicar suficiente porque nos van a morir. Por favor, pídanle al gobierno federal que actúe ahorita. Ya no podemos esperar más. Muchas gracias. Hola, hello, uh, good morning. My name is Senator Monique Limon and I represent Santa Barbara and Ventura counties. And I am here not just as a co-author in solidarity with my colleagues, but also as someone who worked at the UC Santa Barbara campus when the Isla Vista shooting happened. Someone who knows what it's like to get a call and get a list of names that you need to check in with to see if they are alive. That cannot, should not, and will not be the reality that we will accept or tolerate. Gun violence has impacted all of our communities. It continues to do so. And the pain in Texas is a pain that we feel here because we can point to those moments in our communities where gun violence has shattered the lives of those we love, those who are part of our community. So know that we will stand strong as California legislators. Know that we will do everything that we can to protect our community to ensure that guns are out of ways harm for those who should not have those. But also know that we need partners in Washington, D.C., that California alone cannot do it, even with the strongest legislation, without D.C. partners, without Washington, D.C. and our country acting, we will continue to see these challenges. Thank you so much, and let's keep working together to end gun violence now, tomorrow, and for the future. Thank you. On November 8th, 2018, me and my husband walked into our home after a retirement party, and my son was on the couch watching a basketball game with his girlfriend. He told us he was going to go to borderline as soon as the game was over. We went to bed, and we were watching our phones, looking at the news, and my husband said, oh my God, there's been a shooting at borderline. And I ran out to make sure that he was still on the couch. We were very lucky, but tragically, 12 mostly young people with promising futures were brutally murdered that night. Hundreds of young people will have nightmares for the rest of their lives about what they personally witnessed. Thousands of people, friends, families, neighbors of victims will forever be scarred by what happened in our community of Thousand Oaks. And today on the floor, Thousand Oaks wasn't even mentioned because there have been so many additional tragedies. What is happening right now on, in our country is beyond appalling. And it is inexplicable that our, in our country we accept this type of violence. We accept our children dying in their schools. We accept children that are going out for the evening being brutally murdered. After Borderline, I worked to strengthen the prohibited possessor list by giving $13 million in grants to local law enforcement to help the Attorney General remove guns from convicted felons. We also worked to strengthen our red flag laws, making sure that everybody knows what a valuable tool those laws are. 
but we cannot do it alone here in California. We must demand federal action. Hi, my name is Laura Friedman, and I represent parts of the San Fernando Valley and City of Los Angeles. I'm also the mom of a beautiful eight-year-old child. A few years ago, when she was maybe six years old, uh, before COVID started, she happened to hear on the news one morning the story about one of our many mass shootings. And it's really an abomination that at this point I can't even remember which one it was. But I remember that she looked at me, and she had this really incredible look on her face. And she said to me, I'm not safe in this world. She was maybe six years old. I'm not safe in this world. And she teared up, and I teared up, of course. But that child, my child, would be safe from gun violence in many other countries, in many other countries. So when extremist right-wing politicians or the NRA tells you that we cannot regulate our way out of this problem, we know they are wrong. We know that because we have living, demonstrable, empirical proof from sensible countries around the world whose population has said this is not acceptable, it's not how we want to live, and we refuse to live this way. We are now seeing, I believe for the first time, and I hope that this country seizes this moment. I know all of you are ready to seize this moment, all the volunteers here to say, we refuse to live this way any longer. We refuse. So I also am doing legislation in this world. I'm just gonna give you a few statistics that I find shocking. 87% of children know where their parents' guns are in the home. And remember, we now have an armed population. Because again, the same right-wing politicians tell us we need to be armed because of the other armed people, and also because they spend their time making us afraid of our neighbors, making us afraid of other people in our community, telling us that those people are groomers, that those people are after us. These are our neighbors, our community members. So we have an armed population and we have a frightened population. 60% of those same children, 60% of those children have handled those guns in their home. 80% of teenagers who kill themselves do it using an unsecured gun that they find in their own home or the home of a close relative. 80% of those parents clearly had no idea that their child was capable of this. Every day in this country, every single day, eight children in the United States are shot in fa friendly family fire of somebody handling a firearm around them, often other children. My bill, AB 452, would require school districts every year to notify parents about their responsibility under California law to safely store firearms and hopefully to remind them the reasons why. That putting a gun in a shoebox at the top of a closet is not good enough. That they're supposed that the teen that they think is stable and knows how to shoot because they go to the rifle range could be the same teen who is also hiding a secret and living in despair and might take their own life. I want to thank all everybody here for their activism and for their commitment, and I think that we have a moment now to really lead the nation in terms of sensible laws. Thank you. Good morning. I am Assemblywoman Cotty Petrie Norris. I uh, represent the 74th Assembly District in Orange County. Uh, just two weeks ago, there was a uh, mass shooting at a church in my district in Laguna Woods. A politically motivated madman stormed the church intent, intent on murdering dozens of elderly parishioners. The day before was Buffalo. And nine days later, nine days later, we saw 19 children slaughtered in Texas. The frequency of mass murder in this country shocks us and shocks everyone around the world. But in America, it is sadly just become another Tuesday. Too many Americans have become numb to this carnage. And let's be really clear, this, 
This is a uniquely American tragedy. This is a uniquely American ho horror story. As uh, my colleague said, we do not see this anywhere around the world. And that's why we know, we know that there are answers. And here in California, we are doing everything possible to ensure that we are protecting our kids and protecting our communities with common sense gun safety laws. And we have seen, the data bears out, that these laws make a difference. These laws matter. And we need to see this kind of reform at the national lev level. We need Congress, we need the Senate to act with courage to care more about our kids than they do contributions from the NRA. And so that, that is why I'm here today, like you. I'm a mom. I'm a mom who demands action. We, we, and most importantly, our kids, the kids that just died in Texas, they deserve more than our thoughts and our prayers. They deserve more than just a moment of silence. They deserve action. So that's why we are here today. Thank you so much for leading this fight. Together, we will get this done for America. Thank you. Good morning, my name is uh, Wendy Carrillo. I proudly represent the city of Los Angeles. Um, and I, I'm going to share some of the comments that I shared during the debate inside of the assembly chamber. I grew up during a time uh, of incredible gun violence and gang violence in East LA and Boyle Heights. We knew that we needed to walk on a different side of the street to avoid gangs. We knew that we needed to take the longer route to school to avoid uh, neighborhoods that were highly impacted. I went to Roosevelt High School at a time in which there were metal detectors in the entrance so that students weren't, wouldn't be bringing guns uh, on campus. Times have changed and they have shifted, but the problem remains the same. I am a former journalist and in the conversations that we have had, some of the, my own PTSD in watching and reviewing digital images of violence and gun violence was brought up last week when our colleague from Sacramento, uh, Assemblymember McCarty, said on the floor, the bodies of the young children in Uvalde, Texas, were so mutilated by what happened that the parents had a hard time identifying their bodies. There are parents that are having conversations now about having open caskets so that the world can see the impact that that had. We've forgotten what it looks like. We see the photos of smiling faces of those who have been impacted, but we don't see what it looks like. And I want to just read something, and I want to bring up just a little bit of history. The Vietnam War, a nine-year-old girl running through an empty field in Vietnam, naked, burned by napalm, she is simply known as the napalm girl, changed the conversation on the Vietnam War. Years earlier, 1944, I'm sorry, 1955. 14 year old boy, Emmett Till, his mother had an open casket to change the conversation around lynchings in America and really begin the change of civil, civil rights here in the United States. And she said, and I will read, I couldn't bear the thought of people being horrified by the sight of my son, but on the other hand, I felt the alternative was even worse. After all, we have averted our eyes far too long, turning away from the ugly reality facing us as a nation. Let the world see what I've seen. The words of Mammy Till Bradley echo even stronger today. Now the issue is not lynchings, but it's school shootings. Shootings at churches, shootings at movie theaters, shootings where we should feel safe and we don't. Things dramatically need to change, and I want to thank Moms, Moms Demand Action, every town, the Brady Campaign, and everyone that's here advocating for what we can do here in California, but most importantly, have the political courage in Congress to do what's right for everyday families. Unas pocas palabras en español. Mi nombre es Wendy Carrillo. Yo represento la ciudad de Los Ángeles. 
en el Distrito 51. Yo crecí en un tiempo en una comunidad durante la epidemia de violencia de armas armadas, pero también la epidemia de pandillas. Y como niñas sabíamos que necesitábamos caminar al otro lado de la calle para no ser parte de, de una pandilla o para estar seguros. Yo fui a la escuela Roosevelt High School en Boyle Heights cuando habían detectores de armas para entrar a la escuela porque los estudiantes estaban trayendo uh, armas uh, en la escuela. El tiempo ha cambiado, pero el problema sigue igual. Antes de tomar este puesto como asamblista, yo era periodista y en la semana pasada uh, nuestro colega de Sacramento, el asamblista Kevin McCarthy, um, dijo en, en la asamblea que los cuerpos de los niños del tiroteo en Uvalde, Texas, era tan feo y dramático que los padres no pudieron identificar los cuerpos pequeños de sus hijos. Ese tipo de imagen son las imágenes, imágenes que ya no vemos. Antes de tomar este puesto, como dije, yo era periodista y he visto bastantes imágenes a través de la violencia armada en los Estados Unidos y a través del mundo, que son importantes que el pueblo pueda ver. En mi, en, durante la guerra de Vietnam, una imagen de una niña de nueve años corriendo a través de, de un campo completamente desnuda, quemada por la bomba que acaba de caer, cambió la conversación de la guerra en Vietnam. Años antes, en 1955, el imagen de un niño de 14 años, Emmett Till, cambió la conversación sobre los derechos civiles a través de los Estados Unidos y la mamá quiso tener su casca abierta para que el mundo pudiera ver. Y dijo en ese momento, no podría soportar la idea de, lo que la gente se, de que la gente se horrorizara al ver a mi hijo, pero por el otro lado sentí que la alternativa era aún peor. Después de todo, habíamos desviado la mirada durante demasiado tiempo, alejándonos de la fea realidad que enfrentamos como nación. Quiero que el mundo vea lo que yo he visto. Hay familias ahorita de los niños que fallecieron del tiroteo en Uvalde, Texas, que quieren tener un funeral igual. Que el mundo vea los cuerpos de sus hijos que han sido atorrizados por esta violencia de armas armadas a través de la nación. Estamos aquí para pedirles que el Congreso haga lo necesario para cuidar a nuestras familias y que el Estado de California seguirá protegiendo a las comunidades, a los niños, a familias, a través del Estado, pasando leyes que importan, que cambian vidas, que salvan vidas y que nosotros aquí en el Estado de California tenemos la valentía necesaria para terminar por fin esta violencia de armas armadas. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Hi, I'm Assembly Member Rebecca Bauer Cahan, and I've been a member of Moms Man Action long before I was a legislator. And I became a mom for the kids. And these kids want to come up here and they want to say something. So I want to turn the mic over to our future. Hello, I'm Grayson. I'm 10 years old and I say, end gun violence. It's hurting and killing thousands of young kids. It's not good. These kids, these kids do not deserve to be shot because some mentally troubled teenager comes over with a machine gun and kills them. Gun violence is bad for kids because it's bad for kids. Yeah, yeah. because they don't get to enjoy their, li their lives. They need to be able to enjoy their lives and have a long, happy life. I have nothing more to add.
that's our future and they deserve better. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca, for that. And those beautiful children out of the mouths of babes, like Mr. Gibson just said. So my name is Buffy Wicks. I represent the beautiful East Bay, Oakland, Berkeley, Richmond area. And the other day I was driving my daughter to summer camp on, on uh, Monday, first day of summer. And she started talking about the lockdown drills she had done at, in TK, not even kindergarten, TK. And I asked her about it and she said, well, you have to hide under the desk and be really quiet so they don't hurt you. And I was gutted as a parent. And what an indictment on us. What an indictment on me as a parent. What an indictment on our communities. What an indictment on our government for not protecting our children. And the other indictment is, th and there, here's just an uncomfortable truth. These mass shootings get all of the headlines as they should, it is horrible. But for our brown and black communities, they have been facing this gun violence for decades. And we have been ignoring it. And enough is enough. And we have to invest in these communities. And that is why I am proud every year to author the budget request to invest in our CalVIP programs. So we have to talk about these uncomfortable truths and the racial inequities that exist on this issue. So that is critical and it's important that all of us stand up on this. And California will lead the way and we are leading the way. But here's the other reality. There are 50 Republican US senators who are holding hostage our communities right now. And they have the ability to change this. Those Republican senators have the ability to change what is happening in our communities right now. And we must demand that. And I am a mom that demands action. And across this state, if the federal government's not gonna take action, our state legislatures need to take action. So I implore every other state legislature in this country, if our federal government continues to fail, it is your responsibility, my colleagues, and all the other states to stand up and do the right thing. Enough is enough. I am proud to stand, to stand with you in this fight today and into forever until we fix this problem. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, my name is Army Colonel Retired Tom Umberg. I also happen to be a state senator representing Orange County. The weapon that was used in Uvalde, I've fired, shot, cleaned, slept with. More importantly, I've seen the devastation that an AR-15 or an M-16 can wreak on adults. It is soul-crushing to think what that carnage would look like on 10-year-olds. It is so devastating that it is almost paralyzing. It is almost paralyzing. I have a heavy heart today. I came to this building 32 years ago, and some of the things that I'm saying today, I said 32 years ago, and some of the things that were happening in the last, happened in the last two weeks were happening 32 years ago. There's been some change, but there is no way in our society that an 18-year-old should be able to be able to acquire easily an AR-15. There is no way someone with a history of mental illness should not be identified so that we can protect our young people and our community. I am so sad, so sad that I am almost paralyzed, except that the people behind me, the lawmakers, and more importantly, those that have turned this sorrow, this tragedy into action, they inspire me. Jennifer Redmond, whose daughter was killed. Jennifer, you inspire me to do better. Sam Brown, Sam Brown tells his story, his story of being a perpetrator and how to avoid it. You inspire me and you inspire us. So we'll take that, we'll take that inspiration and we'll try to move forward and we'll try to move as my colleague Assemblymember Wicks said, other states, because we can't 
we can't tolerate another tragedy like Uvalde. We can't tolerate another 18-year-old being able to have easy access to an AR-15. We can't tolerate this. We'll do better. Thank you. I'll bring it here. You know, over the decades, I don't believe, when I served as Speaker, as Majority Leader of the Senate, I have ever seen such a broad coalition of legislators from every corner of the state of California coming together in a big way, together with the governor, to, in fact, demand action. I want to make just a couple of points because my colleagues so emotionally, passionately, and elegantly talked about personal experiences and the issues which are so important. I want to make the point that gun laws, California's gun laws, do work. Residents in this state are 25 percent less likely to die in mass shootings compared to other states. Unsurprisingly, less guns means less deaths. The gun violence, the gun violence is uh, uh, not an indictment that we currently have on our gun laws. It is a wake-up call, a wake-up call for adapting our gun laws to the latest illegal weapons of choice, and those are ghost guns, guns where you file off the serial number or you buy something online that doesn't have a serial number. The Los Angeles Police Department, where I come from, declared ghost guns epidemic last fall after a 400 percent increase in ghost gun seizures since 2017 and a 300 percent increase from 2020. This is no time to retreat. It is time to get creative. That is why I, together with my joint author here, the Appropriations Chair, Senator Anthony Portentino, have introduced SB 1327 at the governor's request and in partnership with the governor, together with all the other measures that were moving in an urgency manner, as was suggested by Assembly Member uh, Gabriel, to give private citizens a tool, an additional tool, to keep weapons off our streets. The bill harnesses the power of community as a method of deterrence. If Texas can use private enforcement to take away a woman's right to choose and endanger lives, California can use that law to ban deadly weapons of war and save lives. We have more than 107 gun laws on the books in California, and even if it takes 107 more to save a single life, it is worth it. I stand with the mothers to demand action. We are doing it. We are going to engage. And I want to bring up my co-author here, my joint author, Senator Portentino, the chair of the Senate Appropriations Committee. Thank you, uh, Senator Hertzberg. You know, let's just call it what it is. The senators who don't want to use this moment in history to enact gun regulations are gutless and heartless. Let's say that again. They're gutless and heartless. And so rather than send our prayers and use that, why don't we pray for them that they grow a spine and they use their heart? Why don't we say that we pray for them to grow a spine and use their heart? Grow a spine and use their heart. Because no parent or grandparent should send their kids to school and not have them come home safe. No teacher should be in a classroom and fear being shot. No custodian should be cleaning that classroom and wonder if they're going to come home to their loved ones. And that's where we are in this society right now. I had a protester at my house on Monday in a mask and my daughter was crawling along the floor because she didn't want to be she didn't want to be shot she didn't know if that person had a gun or not my daughter was crawling along our floor because she was afraid of what could happen because there was somebody standing on my front lawn for two hours with billboards protesting so to those folks in Washington Grow a spine, use your heart. Grow a spine and use your heart. As my colleagues have said, the gun laws in California make a difference. We are safer here because of my colleagues behind us and my colleagues who have come before us to enact prudent gun laws. But we also have to be cognizant of who appoints judges because the bill that I authored to keep 18-year-olds from getting these high-powered centerfire rifles was just struck down by a right-wing conservative judge with a perspective. We passed the law 
And that judge undid what I wrote into that law. And that's wrong because we want our people to be safe. What happened in Michigan when a school district received information of a credible threat and then sat on that information and didn't make sure those kids and those teachers were safe, that's wrong. And so this year I have SB 906 that says school districts, when you realize there's a credible threat on your school, you must follow up, you must investigate, and you must do everything you can to keep those children safe. And so that's what we have to do. We have to look at our creative ways to continue to foster our gun control here to show the rest of the world that California gets it, that moms demand action, get it, and that their demands turn into good, solid gun restrictions in our golden state. And so I'm proud to stand with Moms Demand Action with all of you out here today to say again with a loud voice, <laughs> grow a spine and use your heart. Do not wake up another day and see a dead child in a classroom or a dead teacher in the classroom because that is on your watch. Do it right. Frankly, think about your fellow man and put your prayers to actual action and make a difference. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Assemblymember Mark Levine. I represent Marin in Sonoma County. Thank you to my colleagues and Assemblymember Gabriel for helping to organize this. Thank you for Moms Demand in every town for making sure you're here all the time, making sure we're doing work for you and making sure that we remember the lives lost. They will not be forgotten. Um, you know, when I was elected a decade ago, a boy was shot in my district. He was carrying a toy gun. So we authored a law to make toy guns look like toys. It was such a sad thing that we had to do. Um, a few years later, after the shooting in San Bernardino, I authored a law to ban what was the bullet button loophole so that we wouldn't have uh, detachable magazines and that the shooters wouldn't be able to just add more bullets to quickly kill more people. We will continue doing these bills, but as we heard from my colleague, Ms. Wicks, about funding violence pre prevention programs, every dollar, every dime that we put into those programs, well, they have results, but it's a dollar less for our schools. It's a dollar less for healthcare. It's a dollar less for our parks. It's a dollar less for so many things that we care about. And that's why I've authored AB 1227. It's a tax on guns and ammunition that would raise $118 million a year so that the things that cause the harm, the guns and the ammo, that they will pay to repair society, to repair this poisonous gun culture that we have in America, and that we can lead the way in California to raise that money from the guns and the ammo that cause this problem. Thank you. My name is Reggie Jones Sawyer. I'm the proud chair of the Assembly Public Safety Committee for which all of these gun safety bills have gone through my committee. In fact, if you go to the gun lobby's website, a lot of times you'll see a wanted poster with my face on because I am the n enemy number one with the gun lobby because I make sure we are protected here in California. I've been here 10 years, and there's a lot of things I've done, but one of the most, the, the proudest moment I ever had was being able to shepherd all of these bills through. I have not authored one gun bill since I've been here, but I've made sure every gun bill got through the assembly, onto the Senate, into the governor's hands so he can sign it, so that we can be safer. It is so important that we all come together and I'm extremely proud of the people that stood in back of me that are still here and the ones that have left because I can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. It takes a team. And we have some of the best team work members in the country right here on this issue. And so we need to continue to fight. We need to continue to push. And as a granddad that demands action, we're going to continue to perform and give you action. Thank you. Thank you to Moms Demanding Action for being here. 
I'm a father demanding for action. Just like joining my col good colleague from Los Angeles. By the way, my name is Adrian Nazari, and I proudly represent the San Fernando Valley and Los Angeles. Folks, we just commemorated Memorial Day. And I just wonder if 50, 60 years ago, when during World War II, or during the Vietnam War, or the Korean War, when young men and women laid down their lives, they were thinking, I'm gonna sacrifice myself in order to make sure that in the future, in my bright America, someone is gonna walk into a high school or an elementary school or a middle school and shoot up kids. I don't think that's what we built our country on. We built it on the faith that we are gonna protect our country because we're already protecting the citizens in it. Not to go to wars abroad. Meanwhile, there's a domestic war right here. We kill more people in our homeland than we do in wars. And I don't know what's lost in that perspective. I don't know if it's just my immigrant background coming from a country where my family need to, needed to flee overnight so that we, fl we fled Iran right at the start of the war with Iraq. And I'll never forget the news I came to when I arrived to the United States, when I started to learn English, when I started becoming, becoming acclimated as an American, one day waking up to the horror of 29 individuals being killed with an Uzi in San Diego at a McDonald's. Can you imagine the shock of someone reading that news and saying, everyone's calling my country a horrible place that's in war? I thought we came to a place where it protected people. So, Guns were made to kill. It's pure and simple. Its place belongs in a battlefield. One day I hope that our, that our battlefields will become sophisticated enough where we don't need to use guns either. We can we'll use diplomacy. But unfortunately, it seems like what mimics our actions at the top level also is repeated right here in our home. So no day like this should go without a call for action. I ask all of you who are here to organize events in your homes, in your hometowns, in your neighborhoods. Which of the elected officials need to have a protest in front of their office? Who needs to hear what kind of a caravan are you supposed to set up to go to another state, to go to another location, and make sure people hear from you. I did that growing up. I've been on a lot of buses. Because if you want to make your voice heard, you got to support other areas that may not have the support needed in order to move the ball forward. Organize. The NRA or other gun or supporting organizations shouldn't have the right to threaten members who want to do the right thing by posting up our home addresses on their websites. You want to give a chilling effect? All right. But now what is our response going to be? How are we going to put our words to action and make sure we get the results we want? Thank you all. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Steve Bradford, and I chair Senate Public Safety. Thank you. Uh, and I, too, chair Senate Public Safety, and I also am the chair of the Legislative Block Caucus, and I'm here to say that we stand clearly in solidarity with not only these mothers, these young folks, but all, all of us here in California who have said enough is enough when it comes to gun violence. We lead the world in the economy. We lead the world in technology and innovation. We lead the world in uh, you know, renewable energy, you name it, we lead it in the environment, but we also sadly lead the world in mass shootings. And that's something that we shouldn't be proud of. And as Californians and as Americans, we should say enough is enough. 
In the words of Sandy, Fannie Lou Hamer, we should be sick and tired of being sick and tired. Sick and tired of press conferences like this. Sick and tired of church services for young folks who have lost their lives innocently simply because someone feels that they need an assault weapon. These are weapons of war. These are not the weapons that you need to protect your home. This is not the weapon that you use to go hunting. This is not the weapon that you would use for skeet shooting. This is a weapon for mass destruction, of being able to shoot hundreds of rounds a minute. These are, again, weapons that we have in world, war, wartime situations, but we find them here in our domestic community. Assault weapons that were used just two weeks, I mean, two blocks uh, down the street and killing folks just two months ago. So at some point, we should say, enough is enough. And this is not about taking away your Second Amendment right, not at all. We believe in the rights to bear arms, but sensible arms, not assault weapons, not weapons of mass destruction. As, at some point, we should say, enough is enough. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh, Kevin McCarty, uh, local assembly member here in Sacramento. And uh, I'm proud to be here with people speaking up. I'm proud to wear an orange tie today. But it's a disgrace that we have to show up with our orange. I want to show up because my tie is a San Francisco Giants tie. <laughs> Not to talk about kids being slaughtered in Uvalde, Texas. This is not normal. It's not normal that 250 feet from here, an individual can fire 100 rounds in 50 seconds and lives lost. It's not normal, as I said on the floor last week, and as Assemblymember Carrillo said, that parents had to use DNA to identify their eight-year-olds hours after an individual came in with a weapon of war. My brother is a colonel in the Army. He's been to the battlefields of Iraq and across our nation in battle with those weapons that should be for the battlefield, not for our communities. California needs to stand up, and we will. I've authored a couple of successful bills to prevent gun violence and I'm still at it. Some people say, we have 100 laws in the books and we still have gun violence. That's true. But as a UC Davis Research Institute found, because of our laws, our, safe is much sta our, our state is much safer. People in California are 25% less likely to be a victim of gun violence in states that do not have these gun laws. What does that mean? We'll keep at it. I have two more bills this year to have proper background checks to get guns at the hands of people who shouldn't have them. We are only as safe as our neighbors. People can drive to Reno, go on Craigslist, and be on an AR-15 by 3 o'clock and be back here at 6. We can't count on other states doing the work. We need to step up as well in California over and over. If it saves one more life, 20 more lives, we will keep at it. So I applaud Moms Demand Action, every town, the Mayor's Demand Action, who started this movement. But it's not about moms demanding action. I'm a dad, but it's about Californians demanding action, all of us demanding action. Every day I drive my kids to school, right down the street here. The last few weeks we've talked about this issue. I shouldn't have to talk about this issue. They're wearing orange tomorrow. Kids didn't have to wear orange 50 years ago. This is an epidemic that's unnecessary in our country. Nowhere else in the globe do we see what we have here in California. We need to keep stepping up. I applaud the organizers, the advocates, the survivors. People are on the front lines, like Jamila and Sam, thank you. One of our great uh, leaders here in Sacramento as well, survivor of violence. Want to bring her on up now. My friend Alana Matthews, former prosecutor, is looking to bring innovative solutions to Sacramento to prevent gun violence. Alana? Thank you. And thank you to all of our elected leaders who have passed law for common sense gun laws and change. But it's not enough. 
we need local leaders to enforce those laws. Moms demand action, we demand action at the federal level, the state level, and the local level. And the, dema the demands that we can have right now is that we need action from our local leaders like district attorneys to prioritize getting guns out of the hands of those who are not supposed to have them. Getting guns out of the hands of abusers. We know in the research of most mass shootings, it shows that a significant number of them started or had domestic violence or killed someone in their home at first. We demand the second action is that we prioritize getting ghost guns off of the streets, which means we have to hold those accountable, not only who hold the guns, but who put them there in their hands. The third thing that we need to do is demand action for investment and prevention and intervention programs in our most violent, impacted communities. And then the last thing we need to do is demand action to educate and empower our communities about our red flag laws so that we can go and intervene in situations and get guns out of the hands of those who are at risk of causing more harm by using our court system. Thank you. I want to thank all of our incredible speakers today, uh, particularly Julius and all of the lawmakers you heard. Uh, thank you, and thank you to everyone here for indulging us. Um, just so you know, this is the largest press conference I have ever been to uh, by a factor of probably 10 in my time in the legislature. And we put out the invite for this yesterday afternoon. So this gives you a sense of how uh, lawmakers from every corner of this state, people, grandparents, parents, people who care about their community from every corner of their state said, I need to be there and have my voice heard. Because this is an issue that is impacting communities around California. Urban, rural, black, white, brown, indigenous, everybody is being act a affected by the epidemic of gun violence. And I want to recognize uh, Christina Garcia, the chair of our Women's Caucus, who wasn't able to be here today, but who has been a tremendous leader on these issues. So many others who came and weren't able to speak because there was such a large group of folks here. But I think this should give you a sense. And the, the large group of folks gathered here should underscore for you how incredibly passionate our legislature is about moving forward on this issue. I want to make one final point. We don't have a policy problem when it comes to gun violence. We know what the policies are that will save lives. We've seen that in other countries. We've seen that in the work that we've done here in the state of California. We know how to save lives. What we have is a political problem. We have a problem of political courage, and we have a problem that there is a small group of folks who have extreme views who are blocking progress in Washington, D.C. And we know that with a little bit of courage, we can push past that. We know that proposals that are sitting, that are stalled in the United States Senate right now, have the support of 90% of Americans. They have the support of the overwhelming majority of Republicans, the overwhelming majority of gun owners who want to make, pass common sense gun safety regulations, who don't want to see young people killed in schools and in churches and communities and see the cycle of gun violence that impacts so many of our communities of color. But what we have is a political problem. And what you see here today are a group of fired up moms, a group of fired up activists, and a group of fired up lawmakers who are committed to changing things and passing common sense gun safety legislation to protect our kids and to protect our communities. And we are committed to getting it done. Thank you very much, everybody.